<clears throat> the time is 1.26 p.m. October 6, 2024. I'm going to do this in a sufficient timeline. No talk show. All right. The utmost. Beyond cosmos. Remember how I said? This is how I vary it. There's cosmos and then beyond. It, I'll Google that uh, element, sphere, whatever the word, of the galaxy later. There's biblical, scripture, so on and so forth. I've covered this. There's commandments. I, I have my guidance very compartmentalized. Then there's cosmos and there's beyond cosmos. And I was sitting in my chair, silent, not moving, just breathing and listening for, I can't say how long. Not an iota, not at all any reference to how long I did that. Yes, I had a timer, I can say that. But it was irrelevant because for a great amount of the time, there was nothing. I was just sitting here with guidance. I didn't need the timer but it's doing the same action, okay? So I'm sitting here, and then bam, you hear them under the floor, slamming something, and it was two slams, okay? And then within 60 seconds, what I believe is a biological agent. I strongly believe that. I have my reasons of why I say that, but we're gonna not do a talk show. We're gonna stick to what I witnessed, okay, within that two huge bing bings underneath my floor to the right of my chair. I got hit with what I believe is to be a biological agent. I got really sick. I had no time to get to the bathroom. By the time I was to my bedroom door to the hallway, it was gushing out of my rear end. Diarrhea was. Um, and my guidance at that point, no matter how bad I had to go diarrhea, was go down to the stairs and look at the box. There was a box from Walmart. My guidance was don't open the door, don't get it. Go back upstairs and use the bathroom. So at that point, I went back upstairs to use the bathroom. I had to completely wash myself, yes, because I had diarrhea just gushing out of me from the biological weapon. I cannot comment on if the rest of the house had this poisonous fume. Because I went around the house, right? Floor one, so on and so forth, back to floor two to use the bathroom. By the time I was done, which was about five minutes, I went down back to the box and there was an African-American crack addict, visible drug addict man already sitting on my porch. I thought it was the, one of the construction workers because they're all visible deranged drug addicts that come in here. Um, he had opened the box up. I didn't know there was any boxes even being delivered and especially delivered on a Sunday in the middle of the afternoon. He had already opened the box up and was beginning to take my case of paper towels, my essentials, out of the box to walk down the street with them. And this was about within the timeline of 18 minutes since I announced the time on the intro to this testimony. It was 18 minutes prior to the time I had just announced. I also saw an Arabic, definitely, without any doubt, a M Middle Eastern woman could have been from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Palestine, just name it. No problem. She could have worked at, you know, Ali's, Alibaba's gyro bar. Okay, she's full-on Middle Eastern woman. She was in her car on her passenger side, covering for the guy, pretending to fiddle around in her front door of the passenger side with the door wide open while this guy ravaged my belongings as he sat facing the sidewalk. He was sitting on his rear end, right by the box, which was placed right by the stairs. The box was placed right by the stairs. He came and sat right by it, started opening the box. That's why I thought he's one of these deranged 
terrorist construction workers. Okay, he had a baseball cap on, a really dirty blue t-shirt, and some beige pants. And he, he looked like he was wasted, probably on a barbiturate, because he was slightly drooling. Um, his eyes were bugged out, so he might have done a speedball. His eyes were really bugged out too, but that's common, speedballs. Um, and the Iraqi, whatever this is, Palestinian woman had um, shoulder length hair, slightly wavy. She was wearing a tank top, expensive Eddie Bauer type clothing. The car is still parked out there. I didn't actually notice that the special officer do that. Um, she was there in the passenger side pretending to clean her passenger side. She had a project, a task that was taking the whole time while he was going through my property. She was busy working in the side of her car. She was very, very affluent looking with nice Eddie Bauer, yuppie type clothes. Um, she was wearing sunglasses. So when I opened the door, she whipped lashed her head up at me, got really angry visibly and sped up whatever she was doing. And the man sitting on my porch, comfortably bullies sitting there ravaging my property, um, looked up and said, oh, oh, this is yours like a, a drug addict would do, and split, running. He was wearing pants, now that I recall this. He's wearing blue jeans with a black belt barely holding his pants up. He's a hobo. He split, running her direction. She pretended that she didn't have anything to do with it, didn't have anything to do with him, and he went left out the gate. Okay, so the special ops know all this. Okay, so I went back upstairs and came back. I was supposed to just come back. Don't go out there. It's a crime scene. It's some sort of Iraqi or Saudi Arabian loony woman thinking she's everything that she is counter opposite of. Um, let everybody flee the scene. So by the time, that's what I did. That was the tactical action. So by the time I went back down, it was a couple minutes. No Iraqi woman. I didn't even notice the car. I don't pay attention to this. I'm not having to do this. There's so many elite special forces. I didn't notice if she drove off. I didn't care. It's not my problem at that point. I was just supposed to ID her and ID him. And be. I was supposed to come out in the middle of that. I was supposed to let him come because remember, I knew the box was there. So all that. Okay, because I could have got the box, dude. I could have just delayed my going to the bathroom. Um... All right, but no, I was instructed like I just said, so you can review what I said if you need to review that. All right, so at that point, I come back, I get the box. Um, it was paper towels. I don't believe he made off with anything else. There's no Iraqi woman. Hold on, really loud motorcycle. Hold on. There's no crack addict hobo. Everyone's flee. But all I see is as if it's the gay pride parade. I see packs of homosexual men. I'm not kidding you. Walking in groups of six and five, just flooding S Street. Everybody coming, oh no. I saw a pack of six homosexual white men coming up from the White House direction in the 15th and intentionally turning to browse, casually look around, walk as if this is an amusement park down S Street, I saw another gay couple, gay, these are all gay white men, might I add, coming my direction, walking past the house. Those two were on my way back. I was really supposed to avoid them, but I'm supposed to describe them. So they were both wearing um, t-shirts, they both had shopping bags, walking side by side, they both had sunglasses on, they both had short, military style crew cut hair like they might be gays in the military they're both wearing shorts and they were both coming my way once i was coming back from the garbage and they're such caliente hot tamale homos that i had to not be in the mix as they passed my house don't let them see me see them but I did, I got a good look at them and they walked right on past the house. But as they passed the house, they were both purposely looking across the street the other direction. Everyone real paranoid and whacked out around here. The behavior is just screaming neon colors, okay? The, the behavior here with any individual, whatever they want to be, gay or straight, 
they're whacked out. And especially these Middle Eastern people, they keep cruising the house. They have a lot of things they believe about themselves that are so counter opposite of what they're doing in reality. I don't even care, but I'm just supposed to ID them, okay? So on my way to the garbage, once I got my box in, it was go to the garbage. This is like a pattern now. Every time I'm hit with a really bad poisonous fume, whatever it is, is obvious poison, I go to my garbage. And that's what I did. And on my way to the garbage, I was supposed to ID this guy. He was obviously gay as can be on a bicycle, but he's holding his cell phone. And when he saw in the bag, he had a bag too. This is like wacko people. That's a, I know a bag, a small shopping bag and a cell phone, but you're riding your bicycle and you're at a stop sign waiting for the walk signal. And he was exactly in front of me. He was an Arabic man with a five o'clock shadow, about three inch long hair. He was from the Iraqi or from the Kurdistan. He looks like this. Okay. You got my point. Okay. He's Middle Eastern and he's gay, gay, flaming gay. And he's got these objects in his hand. Plus he's riding a bike and he's at the, um, it was like a 10 speed mountain bike. He's at the corner. I'm facing him. We're both on the side of the street, the same side, but he's at opposite end. I'm coming up to him. And as I come up to him, this very flaming gay man did the same thing the white gay man did yesterday. The flaming gay man started cracking his neck. And it was like obvious, like when you watch a boxer, he started doing that. I mean, like, I noticed it from across the street, what he was doing. And I'm not really watching these people too much because I'm forbidden to really interact at all with them. So I was like, there's another really feminine gay guy that suddenly turns into this macho jock and starts getting really, really physically aggressive as soon as they see me coming, cracking their neck like a boxer. You can see he was really angry. He did other actions while he was sitting on a bike being gay as can be. It's bizarre. I've never seen such perverse behaviorism, but moving on. So I took my garbage out. Okay. I come back. I did witness other things, but I'm forbidden from talking about it. Okay. That's all I can say. All right. But just to recap, they're loading me up with chemical or whatever this is, the agents can tell you. And it is like, whoa, it liquidizes. It's, it's horrible. Your stool, it's, oh my goodness. Okay, so they're doing this around the clock and this is all I'm allowed to talk about. Goodbye.